introduction. Morning, everybody. Welcome. It looks like first week in August is a good time to take holidays, isn't it? Anyway, can I introduce uh, Nick, who's going to uh, officiate this morning and uh, stand in for Nick? Welcome. Young Nick and old Nick. <laughs> he said that, not me. Uh, can I just give a couple of notices before we, we move any further? Um, just a reminder about the garden party, which is on the third of, Saturday, the 3rd of September, at the Vicarage, starting at 12 o'clock. Uh, just in, there's, a, there's a sign up at the back of the church, and we may need some gazebos. So if you've got a gazebo doing nothing on that day, then maybe you could, uh, you could offer it. Um, the collection today will just be done as a retiring collection so that there is a plate in the narthex if uh, you have anything to uh, to give thank you for that and uh, yes you won't know this but we are on Wi-Fi in church now thank so big mm, yeah. <laughs> so big big thanks to John Rush for uh, for getting that organized and if you it, uh, well that, that's that's John's secret actually <laughs> The, pass, the password is um, Christ Church with uh, uh, capital C's, org, AUG, 2023. Okay? Christ Church, org, 2023. Uppercase. Sorry? Yes. Didn't that come through? Sorry. It is org. Yeah. Oh, I, I, you, you thought it might be ORG. Yeah, would you? Yeah. Okay. Um, all, in, all, in, all in one. All in one. No. Capital C for Christ. Capital C for church. Yeah. Capital A. Yeah. I can hear right. Jesus now feeding the 5,000. <laughs> you all want the password. <laughs> he would go G O D, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, just a funny thing on that. I don't, John, I don't know whether you get, um, you get emails from the uh, platform provider, but, but I've had one today uh, or yesterday in inviting me to do something, and it starts off Dear Christ. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> over to Nick. I know wardens are powerful, but I didn't know they were that powerful. Good morning, it's lovely. I've, I've done several nine o'clock and one 10.30 a long time ago, so it's lovely to come and worship the Lord with you. Um, I retired from being vicar of Matlock Bath in Derbyshire, Matlock Bath and Cromford, nearly three years ago, and we went to Wadsley Church with Dan, who we'd met before through... Um, toddler praise and grandchildren and, and after a year he said would we go down to St Polycarp's as part of the graft so like some of you I'm a grafter or a grafter yeah aren't we all uh, but we've become one very quickly it's uh, had its difficulties but it's been a, a real joy to go forward together um, to be one church our minister is called James he doesn't know why his parents spelt it with a Y instead of an E so some people refer to him as Jammies, which is, why not? Um, and he's a Pentecostal minister by trade, so it's a very interesting. Um, his church priorities are different sometimes to an Anglican church's priorities. But he's a lovely man, and one thing he's done is helped us to be open to the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when we meet, we focus on the good Lord first. So a moment's quiet for you just to say something like, Father, or I love you, Lord, or come Holy Spirit. Whatever is on your heart, express your love to him.
Would you stand, please? Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord. Oh 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. songs we sing to the lies we lead. Lord, would our lives as a congregation on the top of this hill in Sheffield, Lord, be lives of worship to you. So we pray. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Oh, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Jesus, it's so good to worship you. Lord, thank you you're here. Thank you you say when two or three are gathered, you draw near. Amen. Um, kids, this one's for you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Kyle knows them. Kyle knows the action. <laughs> Oh, boy. 
Please sit down. I just want to say, if you sit at that table, children, you won't have chocolate. <laughs> so I've got chocolate, this on this table. Okay, excellent. All the more. Anybody else like some chocolate? <laughs> Lovely. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is the starter. Here we are. This is the starter. There's, um, there's, oh, I'll tell you what I do need. I need some big plates. I forgot. Do we have any big... Is there a church warden? <laughs> uh, oh, the, it's all right. The Sarah's there. Deacon Sarah, can I have um, two or three large plates, please? Mm, right then. If you ever go... How many people remember proper money? Pound, shillings and pence. How much is... 90 pence in proper money. Oh, goodness me. Nine and... 19... 18, 18 shillings? 18 shillings? For a Mars bar? It would tumble us one hour, a lad. And it's smaller now. And it's smaller. And my daughter bought this for me, and it's called... I think this is a sin. It's called raspberry smash flavour. I don't know if you could deep fry... Have you ever had a deep fried Mars bar from a fish and chip shop? Covered in batter. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's amazing. Right, thank you. Right, the starter. <coughs> Who's going to open it? No. Nobody's going to open it. We can't eat if it's not opened. There we are. <laughs> right, how many people around the table... How many people around the table? Shall we count? One, two, come on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm allowed chocolate if my wife's not here. Right, that's eleven. <laughs> right, shall we divide this Mars bar into eleven? Yes. But if we divide into eleven, we'd leave lots of people out, wouldn't we? How many people would we leave out? Okay, then, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 35. Right, to be fair, let's divide this into 35. Oh. Divide it into 5 and then divide it into... Hey, there's somebody clever here. Did you hear that? Divide it into 5. Yeah, and then divide 
those five bits into seven. I'm glad you've just chalked yourself into a job. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> You could melt it and then have a teaspoon each. Hey, lick it and pass it round. Oh, lick it and pass it. Oh. oh, I don't know what sort of church this is. It's not my sort of church. Oh. And you would all say that. Right, how many, pe how many are there of us? 35. Oh, you said 37. Oh, 35 plus 11. Oh, 46. That's ruined the maths. Oh, that's ruined the maths. 46. No, I don't think I fancy any It's all sticky. You don't fancy any now? Why? Because he's touched it. No, no, it's just um, it's raspberry for a mouse. Yeah. I mean, raspberry the mouse box is quite, it's quite bad, isn't it? It was a mouse bar. So that's five bits. <laughs> I've got a better idea. Why don't just us 11 eat it? Yeah, yeah come on then, share a bit round. Sorry, folks. Take a piece and. Yeah, hey, yeah, there's three big pieces there. Four, I'm watching you. I have a big brother and a little sister. So when there's one piece of pie left, and my sister didn't want any. You know what mum and dad said, don't you? One of you cuts and the other chooses. So it was definitely half and half. Don't lick the knife. You don't put a knife in your mouth. No. Right, that'll do. Pass it round. See if anybody wants any. Well, I could have had that. Big piece. All oh, right. Thank you. Right. I'll, I'll take the knife out. Though. No, no. Later, you just pass it round. I'll take the knife out. Though. <coughs> pass it round. Right. So that's the starter. You can guess. Does anybody know the Bible reading for today? I mean, it's not the transit. You do. Well, of course you know. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> is it is it is it nice strawberry flavoured Mars bar? Really good. Actually, it's good. <laughs> good lad, he took the biggest piece. Go on. Thank you. I haven't had one yet. I don't mind. Of course I do. Mm. Right, that's a good starter. I think we'll now have the main course. Um, has anybody brought any bread? <laughs> oh, it's behind me, thanks. Um, I want you to pretend there's only five, so can you open it and put five pieces of bread on there, please? Oh, you can, all right. There's plenty of other things to do. I can see one to bear, and then there are five. You can do what? <laughs> Convenient dustbin. I must remember that next time I meet you. One, two, three. How many are there of us? Um, About 47, or they give or take, yes. That's four. And one more. That's five up. Now, is there enough there? Is there enough there to give everybody some bread? Could we divide that, that up into 47? We're not going to, but I just thought we could do. Well, I suppose you could if you want. I mean, I don't mind. Now, in the story, what goes with the bread? Wine. Wine? I like the way the children are brought up in this church. It's a little bit worrying, isn't it? When our children... Uh, we used to collect our grandchildren from school for when they were little and... Uh, they said, where do you want to go? The pub! <laughs> it's a generational thing, but it was Wisewood Pub, and there's a big slope where they can play, and they could eat free. They can't eat free anymore, so they're not going. Right, apart from wine, what should we have with the bread in the Bible story? 
Has anybody brought any fish? All say it together. Behind you. <laughs> Would you go and get that blue box, please? Are they alive fish? You'll find out in a minute. Thank you. Can you put it on here? I hope you like fish. You don't. Well, do you want somebody else to get them out? Does anybody want to uh, unwrap the fish? You do. You two do that together. Then. They didn't believe me. It's a fish. It's from Galaxy of Galilee, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Gullible this lot, aren't they? Oh, there we are. Can you smell it? <laughs> right, so we've five loaves and two fish, and there are 47 of us. How do we divide it? Exclude the vegetarian. How many vegetarians and vegans are there? Just one, right. Pray for us, somebody, please. How, I wonder how we can divide that up. Could we use gloves? Yeah. Or what we could do is give people a fish fork. Who would you like to have a piece of fish? Go and give somebody a fork. Go and give somebody a fork. Do you want to go and give somebody a fork? No. Be careful, go and give somebody a fork. That's the good news. The bad news is they're going to bring you the fish now. Whoever's got a fork, would you like to take the fish to and see if they want to scrape a bit off? Mind the bones, I've not deboned it. Apparently the fish in the Sea of Galilee are called, one of them's called St. Peter's fish, which I think is a bit of a stretch, don't you? Oh, they are trying it. Is it all right? Don't have too much because that's my lunch. Rona. Rona. Well, my wife said she's not touching it. <laughs> Is there enough fish to go around to fill everybody's tummy? You think there is enough fish to go around? 47 people? I don't think so. Right, when you've tasted it, name it. No, it's all right. Peter. Neither. I can't remember. It's from the Sea of Galilee, okay? So don't think it's herring or sea bream. Oh. Anybody else like a piece of fish? You see, I don't think there's enough food here. Come on then. We've got a clean fork. One more. Do you want some? No, or you don't need the fork then, do you? The skin's the best bit, isn't it? My wife leaves the skin and I eat it. It's good for you. And there's a professional fish eater here. That's big bit. And put your fork on there. Well, you see, the point is, I don't think that Mars bar was enough for 11 of us, and I don't think there's enough loaves and fishes here for us all. And if you listen to the story that we're going to have read to us by different people, the Bible story, see how many people were fed with five loaves and two fishes. Right, where are the Bible readers, please? Come up the front and don't forget everybody's sat on the balcony and is a bit deaf. Belt it out. Yeah, leave my dinner alone. Right, come on. Let's listen to the Bible reading. Turn around. 
Jesus had just heard of the death of his cousin John. Herod had had John beheaded to please his wife and to impress the guests at a dinner party. Everyone who knew John was very sad. Jesus and his disciples got into a boat and sailed out onto the lake. They headed for a quiet shoreline a long way from town. They hoped they could find a quiet place where they could be alone. Oh, we need some space. This news has hit Jesus really hard. He needs to rest. He hasn't stopped for months. But when the crowd saw Jesus and his disciples get into the boats, they started to run round the lake. And by the time Jesus and his disciples landed, there was a large crowd waiting for them. Tell them to go away, Jesus. We need some space. And you need to rest. But they've come to be fed. Look at them. They're like sheep without a shepherd. How could I send them away? So Jesus sat on a hillside and started to teach the people. The day wore on and the sun began to sink lower in the sky. Jesus, you need to send the crowd away. This is a remote place and it's getting late. These people haven't eaten since dawn. They need to buy food for the journey home. You buy them some food. But Jesus, that would take eight months of a man's wages. Are we to spend all that money on bread for these people to eat? Go out into the crowd and see how many loaves you can find. So they went through the crowd. Andrew found a boy with a packed lunch and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus, there's a boy here with five small barley loaves and two fish. But look at this crowd. This is hardly enough for so many to eat. Jesus looked at the boy. He held out his hands and without a word the boy gave him his lunch, all the food that he had. Jesus smiled. Tell the people to sit down on the grass. <clears throat> so the disciples went through the crowd again and all the people sat down. Then Jesus stood before them and took the loaves in his hands. Blessed are you, Lord our God. By your goodness, we have this bread to offer, fruit of the field and work of human hands. May it be for us the bread of life. He blessed the fish as well. Then he broke the bread and fish and gave pieces to all the disciples. They went through the crowd, giving everyone as much as they wanted. All the people began to eat. They ate until they were satisfied. Everyone had their fill of bread and their fill of fish. Jesus, they've all eaten, but I still have bread left. They all say they've had enough, but there's still fish to spare. Take some baskets and go and pick up the broken pieces. So the disciples went through the crowd again, picking up all the broken pieces of bread and fish they could find. Each disciple had a basket, and each disciple filled it with pieces. Twelve baskets full! But there were only five barley loaves. There were only two fish. And there are at least five thousand men, not counting the women and children with them. And all have eaten their fill. Everyone is satisfied. Go down to the shore and get into the boats. Sail for Bethsaida. I will stay and dismiss the crowd and I'll join you there later. The disciples were amazed. Without a word, they got into the boats and set sail. Jesus stayed with the crowd and blessed them before he sent them on their way home. Then he made his way up them to the mountainside and prayed. I don't know what's next. Does anybody know what's next? Oh, Shelley. Where are they? Oh, you're there. Good. I thought you'd gone for a minute. Over to you.
Right, first of all, I need some people that are handy with scissors. Very helpfully, Nick has counted everybody. So there are 47 people in the building. How many fish did the little boy have? Two. Two times 47. Click, 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 click. <laughs> 94, thank you. So we need, by the time I have finished waffling on, we need 94 fish. I think grown-ups, they are gonna need some help. If you're holding a very small baby, you're exempt. <laughs> so, there are lots of scissors. There's lots of bits of paper. My suggestion is that if you fold your piece of paper in half, and cut like this, and a tail, you will have yourself a fish. If you have a much cleverer, fancier way of doing it, please feel free to make use of that. But we need 94 fish, please. <laughs> now I'm gonna stand up here because I can't actually remember without looking at my nose. <laughs> So, Jesus has just heard that his cousin's been beheaded, and presumably he's pretty upset about this. He's been out teaching, he's been doing the thing he does that he's called to do, he's been doing God's work, and they get in a boat, and I would imagine that he went, oh, they went to a lonely place. He wanted, they wanted to be somewhere quiet. Jesus needed some time to grieve. He needed some recharge time. But he didn't get it. Nope. The crowds that had been following him wanted more. They were hungry. They could see God. They could see something exciting happening. I'm sure there was a million different reasons why people were following him. But nevertheless, they were. Out they all piled, round the lake, followed him to the other side. Not so quiet. No quiet grieving time for Jesus. So, what does he do? I know what I do when my children want me and I've got nothing left. I go, grrr. <laughs> Particularly if it's before 7 a.m. and I have not yet drunk tea, I don't tend to excel at a compassionate response. But Jesus gets out of the boat with all his tiredness and his sadness and he looks at the people and he's overwhelmed with compassion. So, and he goes on to do this outrageous miracle. It's, there's been miracles for individual people lots of times, but this was a miracle for a huge number of people. But we've all heard it. We've heard it before. We've heard it a thousand times. And what does it actually mean? For me, this is a story of encouragement. And we don't crave a miracle that gives us lots of bread, mostly. Most of us have enough. We're rich Westerners, and starvation is not an imminent danger that makes us feel sick with horror. It's not really a thing. So what does it mean to us in these days of plenty? I think what it means, or can mean, is that God is big enough. We like to make sensible plans within our means that we can carry out and that's all fine and good but occasionally and we don't always know why or when God decides to be preposterous he decides to take two little fish and um, if you've got boys even though they're bottomless pits for food probably a small boy is not going to eat two fish that size and they're probably not going to eat five loaves as we think of them for their lunch also they would whine carrying that much so having a little look at what fish actually lived there apparently there were sardines I could imagine packing those in a little boy's lunchbox 
So we've got a ridiculously small amount of food, enough for a little person. And we've got a ridiculously large number of people, 5,000 men and their women and children, and they had a lot of children then. So some people estimated at 15,000, 20,000, anyway, lots, a lot more than we have here. And that was fine. Jesus could do this huge, enormous miracle for all of those people, even with the tiny little bit that he had. I think the message there is God's power is enough. But the other thing that makes this miracle quite different is until then there's been someone touching the hem of Jesus' garment or Jesus healing people individually and Jesus doing all the things. And in this case, he suddenly turns around and goes, no, nah, you guys do it. And I can just imagine the disciples going, no, no, Jesus, you do the sorting it, you make it go. This is your job, Jesus, not our job. No, nope, he's not having any of it. They, they need to do it. And they have to go and look for some food for this huge crowd. And they come back with it. The Matthew reading doesn't have the little boy in it, but other Gospels do. One little boy's packed lunch. Now, the disciples, I'm pretty sure they didn't feel like they were enough or like they had got enough or that they could do enough at that point. But Jesus prayed and he sent them with the bread. We don't actually know where the miracle happened. It doesn't tell us, does it? I've always wanted to know. Did Jesus break the bread and suddenly he was holding two whole loaves? Did he put little pieces into big baskets and send the 12 out with a crumb of fish and a crumb of bread in each basket? How would I have felt with a crumb of bread and a crumb of fish in a basket going and handing it round? We don't know, but what we do know is that the disciples said yes. They looked at Jesus' ridiculous idea that he was going to feed all of these people with this tiny little pack lunch. And they said yes. And they risked ridicule going and feeding all these people with their tiny bits of loaves and bread. But it worked because Jesus was enough. And the disciples were enough because it wasn't their power. The other person is the child. I think it's very interesting that the only person who appears in the story to have offered food is a child with a packed lunch. I don't quite believe if that child had a packed lunch that nobody else had a packed lunch. Maybe that child's mother was somewhere. Presumably she packed lunch for everyone, including herself. Presumably that wasn't the only child with a packed lunch. So why didn't ever other people offer their packed lunch? What held them back? What holds us back? Were they, they looked at their lunch and they thought, oh, that's no good for everyone else. Oh, that's no point in me offering it. And I think sometimes we can think that about ourselves and what we have to offer. And we can think, oh, my little bit or my thing that I can do, it's not worth it. Someone else will do it better. Someone else can do it. God, God can use someone else. But actually, God only needs a small child dinner and some disciples who say yes. Because if it's about God's power, then we've got nothing to fear because we are enough, because God is enough. So what I want lots of fish for is I want everyone to have a think about what you might have that you don't think is worth offering. Because if we listen to what God wants us to do, and the plan's not always the same, we can see this because Jesus clearly had a pattern of what he did most days, and this day he didn't do that. And the disciples were confused, but they followed. And as a church... Um, 
I'd like us to pray that we listen and we follow, even when the plan changes or God does something ridiculous. And the fish is, if you want to, write down something that you have that you don't necessarily think is worth offering. Put it in your pocket and remember that God can use that, even that, even us, even our little tiny things, because he is enough. Kids, fishes. You got any fishes? Can you hand fishes round? And then somebody else who's good at carrying boxes without spilling them, could you follow the person with a fish and give people pens or pencils? Wow, that is a lot. That is impressive. There is a lot of fish in here. Do you want to offer them round? <laughs> Two fish per person. Oh, there's more fish here. We've got excess fish. Amazing. <laughs> We've got more. There's one. Can I give some? Can I have this fish? I like this green one. Am I not allowed this fish? I'll make myself a fish. No. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Write something little. Um, just in case you didn't hear, we're going to write something on the fish that we could do or give or have to offer that maybe we've thought isn't worth offering. Johnny, can we have, a, have the next song while we're doing this? You 
have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been You have been so, so good With every breath that I have made I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after me running after me your goodness is running after, me, running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after. Running after me With my life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running out It's running after me And all my life you have been All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Yes, all my life you have been faithful Thank you, Lord And all my life you have been so so good with, with every, every breath, breath that I have made, able I will sing of the goodness of God, God. Oh, I, I will, will sing, sing of the goodness of God, God. Oh, oh I will sing, sing of the goodness of God, God. that moment of the goodness of God. We'll have some short prayers because I'm conscious of the time and it's uh, an all-age service. If anyone would like to uh, pray out loud and thank God for his goodness for anything, feel free to do so. I want to thank God for the church for what God is doing in this church, in Stannington, in our church of St. Polycarp's, because he's so good to us, so loving, so encouraging, and he's given us so many gifts and ministries. In your goodness, Lord, may they be expanded and fulfilled.
We ask your blessing on those who uh, are away on holiday. May they be kept safe and come back refreshed. And pray for those who, for some reason, are unable or don't want to come to fellowship. The Lord would bring healing and wholeness to them and a desire to meet with their brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'd like us to pray for John Allen, that the Lord would bring him peace of mind and health to his body. And we give thanks for the life of, of Bob Westhead, uh, Dawn's dad, David's dad, and maybe it's his husband, that the whole family would know God's grace and peace, especially tomorrow as we... Uh, have the services give thanks and remember that he's safe with the Lord. <coughs> Children, do you all know the Lord's Prayer? Shall we say our Father together, everybody? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And if you need some prayer, for whatever reason after the service, I'm sure you're used to it, do sit with somebody and ask them to pray with you and for you. Um, is there one song we could do rather than all three? Is there one in particular? Is there one for the children or just one you choose? I'm just conscious of the time. Would that be all right? Shall we stand, please? Creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry, and then from north to south and east to west, we hear Christ be magnified. Where the whole Eminence. His name would burst from sea and sky, and then from rivers to the mountain tops, we see Christ be magnified. We're singing, Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me, and all Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Whoa. Finds its inmost melody, and every human heart its native cry. And then in one enraptured 
share the peace to end with. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with each other a sign of peace. <laughs>